Welcome to the Inside Java Podcast, a Java podcast made by the people at Oracle who makes Java. My name is David Lavasse and I'm your host for today's episode, episode 24. This episode is a bit special as it's the first episode that is recorded face to face in real life. And today I have with me Eric Osterlund. So Eric, I'm glad you're the first guest, I mean the first physical guest of this podcast. So welcome. Thank you, David. Can you introduce yourself? I can, yes. So I'm Eric Osterlund and I've been working at Oracle now for about six years. And since I started, I've been working on the CGC project. And before I started Oracle, I was doing research in the low latency GC area. So it's quite natural I ended up here. What a coincidence, because we're going to discuss ZGC today. So we did an episode a while back on ZGC when we started this podcast, uh, but I think it will be useful uh, to do a quick recap. So can you tell us what is ZGC in a nutshell? So in a nutshell, it's an attempt to remove the latency problems from garbage collection. And the approach we've taken is to do pretty much all of the work concurrently instead of in stop the world pauses. And yeah, that way we remove the typical hiccups you get from garbage collection. And yeah, that's the main idea behind ZGC. Cool, thanks. So ZGC started as an experimental hotspot feature in GDK 11. It was later made a production feature in GDK 15, if I recall correctly. And you did some additional work in 16 as well, right? Yes, that's right, yeah. So can you quickly go over that? Oh yeah, again. Uh, so I built something that I refer to as concurrent stack processing. And yeah, we had this annoying thing where we did almost everything concurrently except uh, scanning routes and in particular scanning thread stacks, which is a large-ish root set. Um, and yeah, we wanted to throw that out there in the concurrent phase as well. And yeah, the, the JEP was all about how to make that possible. So the net benefit is that now? The net benefit is that we have, we're shrinking down the pause times even further. Before, the goal was to not stop the world for longer than 10 milliseconds. And now um, it's one millisecond instead. So we're typically way below one millisecond. So yeah, I'll repeat, below, typically below one millisecond, which is amazing. I mean, congrats. Thank you. Now, uh, obviously, there are some trade-offs, right? Yes, um, exactly. So the main the main goal is getting rid of the latencies and you know doing everything concurrently. And one particular thing that we do concurrently is moving objects around, which requires something referred to as a load barrier. It's a small set of instructions emitted whenever we load a reference, and yeah, it can eat some uh, performance. The the cost has been minimized as much as possible, and a lot of work has gone into making it as efficient as it possibly can be. But nevertheless, it is a cost that other non-concurrent GCs do not have. So it has a bit of CPU there, and we also typically need a bit more memory since while we are performing garbage collection, the application continues running and allocating more memory. So therefore, we need a bit more headroom due to the concurrent nature. So yeah, we sacrifice a bit of CPU and memory and get uh, rid of latencies. That's clear, thanks. Now, you mentioned load barriers. Barrier is a term that is often used when talking about GC. So can you tell us, uh, can you quickly explain what a barrier is? Sure, yeah. Uh, so typically it's a, a few instructions emitted for um, loads and stores of references. There are versions um, nowadays, mostly in academia, I think, where you have it on primitives as well. But in hotspots, all the barriers are for reference accesses. And it's a few instructions to do some kind of bookkeeping work for the garbage collectors. And hotspot is responsible for inserting those few instructions, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's... And that's not something specific to ZGC. That's something... No, no. Um, what is specific, I guess, is that... Um, most of the garbage collectors traditionally use barriers for uh, reference stores or writes um, and not loads. Whereas ZGC does the complete opposite. It has barriers for loads of references, but no barriers at all on writes. Um, so, so that's a, a difference. Okay. So, uh, well, I'd like to discuss 
some of the exploration that uh, you are thinking uh, for the GC. So what what would come next? I mean, so today the GC is a production GC. It provides a sub-millisecond post time, which is amazing. But are there some things that you are thinking about improving? Or? Yes, there are. Um, so as I mentioned before, we're really good at latencies, but it comes at a cost of CPU and memory. And we want to reduce that cost as much as possible to make CGC available in more workloads where you do want to have low latencies, but you don't necessarily want to pay uh, a lot of memory and CPU overhead. And in particular, um, there's a GC strategy called um, Generations, where you split the Java heap into two um, different parts, uh, where you have one part where you have young objects and one where you have old objects. And this allows you to do more efficient collection on the young objects alone instead of the old objects. And this is typically beneficial because most, most applications um, have... Um, young objects that die very quickly. They allocate some memory and then it almost immediately dies. So it makes sense to focus garbage collection where the young objects reside in memory. So support for multiple generation, young and old, is something you're working on for ZGC. That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, one of the typical issues with generational GC is the scavenging of the young generation. So how do you plan to tackle this? Um, yeah, so so far in Hotspot, all the collectors um, use scavenging. And what, what scavenging means is that uh, the garbage collector, when it performs a young gen collection, it assumes that there will be very few objects surviving in the young generation. And when it traces through the live objects, it immediately copies them out to some other space. And that allows you to free up a lot of memory in the young generation, which is very beneficial when the speculation is true that most of the objects die. However, when that's not the case, you end up with the problem that you are um, copying through a lot of memory um, unnecessarily. And we don't want to do that in ZGC. Uh, so we are, in, we are not going to use scavenging. Instead, we're using a two-phase approach where we first mark through the objects and then do relocation separately afterwards. There are actually multiple reasons why this makes sense for a concurrent collector. Another reason is that we can start freeing memory um, after marking is done, but before the relocation has finished. So we, we can start freeing up memory rather quickly. So by having a two-phase collection, we can actually start freeing memory faster, whereas normally in a, in a stop the world um, collector, you would, uh, the, the memory would only be available when the entire collection is finished. So it makes more sense to use scavenging there. Um, and of course, another reason why we don't want scavenging is because we want to not have to reserve memory up front for the live set, because we don't know how much will be live. Um, in the young gen collection and, and if you use scavenging you typically have to have enough memory available up front for the entire live set to move um, and we don't want that so yeah that's another reason so no more scavenging issue that's sweet now i'd like to chat about color pointers going forward but first can you remind our listeners what they are uh sure um Color pointers is a technique in garbage collection where you insert some metadata into the pointer itself. It can be high order bits, it can be low order bits, it depends. But in uh, the mainline version of ZGC today, um, there are high order pointers, oh, sorry, high order bits in the pointers, and they encode part of the life cycle of the pointer. And this is a key element that allows us to do a lot of things concurrently, which is what combats the latency is. So yeah, that is what a color pointer is. Okay. And uh, going forward, do you plan to keep using color pointers in generational ZGC? That's a very good question, uh, because in the single generational version of ZGC that's um, uh, in the main line at the moment, we have 
four colors, whereof three of them um, result in multimat memory. And what I mean by that is that the entire heap it has m three different virtual views of memory to the same physical memory. And this is how we implement color pointers. The slight issue with the um, generational version of ZGC is that there are a lot of color bits that we need. So it was not an obvious decision to keep color pointers. And of course, if you if we would have given up on that and the discontiguous heap we have as well, we could have used compressed pointers instead. Uh, nevertheless, we have investigated this thoroughly and we think that keeping uh, colors is definitely something we want to do. And in, pic in particular, there are multiple memory optimizations we can do with color pointers as well as having faster load and store barriers. So we expect to get more throughput and also actually save memory in many cases compared to even having compressed pointers. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that when the tracing marking through the young generation has finished, um, we can free memory immediately um, as we go. Whereas without color pointers, we'd have to wait until every single pointer in the heap has been fixed. Uh, which typically involves having another phase where we walk through all of the memory one more time. And that leave, leaves a lot of floating garbage um, in the meanwhile, which actually wastes memory as opposed to save memory. So we want to use color pointers so we can reduce the amount of memory use. And, and I think this is kind of special with the concurrent collector that the trade-offs are not the same as they were in the Stop the World um, versions of garbage collection. So, um, yeah, we are going to use color pointers, and the way that we managed to implement that is to have um, something that we are referring to as colorless roots. And what this involves is that we have colors in the pointers, in the in-heap representation of the pointers, but once they're loaded, we remove the colors and restore them when we store a pointer. And this comes quite natural because with the generational version of ZGC, we need both load and store barriers. So we have a natural place to do both of these things. And it, in a way, it's kind of similar to encoding and decoding compressed loops, but instead we're encoding and decoding colored pointers. Okay, cool. So you told us about the plans going forward for ZGC. That is adding generation, well, make ZGC a generational garbage collector. Um, can you now go over the benefits you hope to get, you hope to achieve once that work, once that development will be done? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the main expectation um, that we're hoping for is that we will be able to continue delivering low latencies without compromising that. We will um, reduce the amount of CPU and memory overhead needed in order to achieve that. And the hope is that this will allow us to deliver ZGC to more um, workloads where you have more constraints on the resource utilization. So preserving the original goal of ZGC, that is very low latency, but uh, reducing the overall overhead to achieve those low latency. That's right, yeah. Now on timing. I guess it's probably a bit early to talk about any concrete timing. So uh, we should suggest to the folks who are who are interested to keep an eye on the ZGC dev uh, mailing list. That's where things will happen, right? That's a fair assumption, yes. Okay, cool. Well, Eric, uh, we have to wrap up. So it was a great pleasure to have you on the show uh, and even more as the first physical guest. So thanks again for your time. Thank you, David. Bye.